been some stuff that's been leaked, that there's been stuff already that has been confirmed. Lots of lots of stuff are happening. Um, so we will definitely, uh, for those listening to the pregame show, we'll definitely be hitting the um, the uh, the main press conferences. Um, but then we will talk about the other ones uh, at a later date. Uh, as we will discuss in the podcast regarding our schedule for this year's E3. So, uh, but let it be known. This is, this is, this is, I feel like for me, when it comes to E3, uh, especially for us, like it feels like the, um, like, uh, I won't say the Super Bowl, but like it hit the ground running, like put my journalist hat on and my predictions and whatnot and just eat up as much information as I can so I can give a proper thought or opinion on something. So it's kind of, it's kind of that feeling. So it's like, oh man, how the press is Sony, my, they announced something or whatever. So yeah, I'm excited. So mm-hmm. yeah, uh, sorry. Roman just sent me a message. Uh, he's, he's asking me to add him in manually and I, you can't do that through this. Not that I know of that. Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, what happened? Like, did his like computer just shit out, shit on itself? <laughs> uh, no, he, he said he wants to do it through phone. I mean, I see on my oh, phone. Oh, I see. He just... must. He, he might. He might be out and about. Maybe. Might be like out and about, and it's like, oh, I forgot. So, um, yeah. Uh, see, see, see what, see what. Yeah. Tell I'm, him. I'm, I'm messaging him right now. Okay. All right. In the meantime. Uh, how are you folks doing? How, how, how is the internet doing nowadays? Uh, depending on how you ask, it might be dramatically bad. And if you, dep- and if you ask somebody else, then dramatically, I'm going to get rid of this actually. Hang on, where is this thing? Yeah, I'm just going to exit that. Uh, that idea I thought was, was okay, but not really wanted. Uh, let me see. Get rid of this thing of a barber. Uh, where is it? Screen capture? Uh, the display capture. No, that's Greg. Uh, where is it? Uh, I guess Colin. Uh, Roman logo, window capture. There we go. Awesome. Okay. What I'm confused about is when I click on the link, it takes me right to Google Hangouts. Huh. Let's see. Uh, let me so see. I'm confused as to how he's not able to. Is he on his phone? Is it- yeah. Huh. I'm not sure how that would work on the phone, honestly. I know. I'm seeing that too, but... Uh, there's no place to copy you or all. I'm pretty sure you can... Uh, you can. I use these hangouts for work calls. Uh, I just can't join in from the link. I'm going to be on my phone for the cast. Uh... I don't know how to add him manually. Yeah. Let me see. Maybe I can do something on my end. Oh, wait, hang on. If I did add... Oh, gotcha. Okay. Hey, where's that at so I know where it is? It's so... Uh, okay, there is a... Um, if you scroll on the uh, on the Hangouts video room or video ah. thing, there's a, an add plus button at the top. Okay, so it's just like a little plus and a person? Yeah. Okay, click on that and it comes invite people. Enter yeah. name or email. Yeah. Or so- copy link to share. Yeah, so ask him for his email, and we'll invite him that way. I believe that's the way to do it. It seems logical. Yeah, it's just gonna send him a link. <laughs> that's that's the thing that's killing me right now. It's like it doesn't. There's no other way to do that. Oh. Uh, I, yeah. See, yeah. see. <laughs> I'm kind of stumped. <laughs> yeah, let's ask for his email. Let's try try that way, regardless. Um, if not, ask him how. <laughs> Cause like, like I, I don't know. Like if, if if I can't do it that way. All right, hang on. I'm sending. I'm trying to send him an email. Yeah. Welcome to the pregame show. We're trying to get Ramen on on the on the show on his phone. So, Ramen, if you're watching, this is on you. <laughs> we. I know. Like I know. With, I know. With, I know streaming, and I know certain things, but. There's some other things I don't know. <laughs> yeah, with uh, all right, I sent it via email. Um, with uh, Discord and Skype, you can just add someone to a call. Yeah, like I know how to do that. But this, I was like, how do you add someone to a call? They have to accept a link or something to that effect. 
Yeah. It's not like it's a closed room. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the link that I send you guys is like when I hit that plus sign like you were talking about, I hit copy link to share. Right. And it just copies a link to my clipboard and then I copy paste it to you guys or just paste it to you guys. Yeah. Oh, I see him. So I, that's okay. Ramen, can you speak? Hang on. You're, you put your webcam on. Your mic is muted. Uh, it looks like... Hello. Oh my god. You live. There we go. I do live. You live. Okay, Holy so shit. so <laughs> sending so sending it via email is, is, is how I can get you in via phone. Yeah. Yeah. That would that, that works. Okay. So so Ramen That's very yeah. strange. That's very strange that the link didn't work. Yeah. So Ramen, I have to ask, so why are you on, on the road or on foot for this podcast? Uh I am over at my friend's house. He needed some help. After, I got to work early. He needed some help. So I came over here to help him out. Didn't have enough time to get home. So I'm like, eh, I'll do the podcast over here. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> now, I, I, yeah. did, I did the same. What was it? I remember, I remember going to a friend's place for an event in Fresno. And I was talking on the phone. I think it was on Skype. It might have been with the abaya twins on a podcast um mm -hmm. and i was speaking on the phone on a podcast on their end so i know how that feels um but yeah welcome to the show um nice nice I'm, i sound all right do i you sound perfectly good like okay. you sound good nothing wrong your audio levels are fine and uh, yeah you sound pretty good sweet so yeah, we're just we're just shooting the shit before we really get into the um e3 madness that happens uh, that we talk about in, uh, in the bomb of the hour, but fucking, I'm excited, man. I'm super excited. Um, yeah, I definitely want to just spill out all my guts on what's, what's to come for E3. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, definitely. Have you seen the news today? The biggest, the biggest, uh, game that was announced today, and that was <laughs> SpongeBob <laughs> Bikini Bottom, uh, Battle Royale yeah, happening. Yeah, the remaster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's you pretty fucking cool. Royale? It's a battle royale, yeah. Wait, what? It's no, not. wait, no, it's not. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a remake. It's a, remake. It's a, yeah, it's a remake. I thought I saw specifically said it was a battle royale. Nah, it's it's just called a uh, battle for Bikini Bottom, but uh, it's a it's a remake it's... of a game that came out for the uh, what like like three sixty. Uh... Was it even older than that? I want to say, I don't know. I, I know that there's a cult falling for that game. Valer came in strong. <laughs> you know, Valer, I can, I, I have the power to ban you. You know that, right? Battle for <laughs> uh, I'm looking it up SP. right now. <laughs> it's funny. Well, because Anthony, I mean, let's be honest here. This is a big mess up on your part. <laughs> What? <laughs> you thought it was a, a battle royale? I know it's not the biggest <laughs> mistake I've made in my life. I didn't say oh, biggest yeah, no. mistake. No, so, so it, uh, which is what I thought it was. Mm. See, it came out October thirty first, two thousand three, and it was for GameCube, Xbox, PlayStation two. Hmm. It's basically, honestly, like I, I've I've watched uh, Super Mega play it recently, and it's basically a uh, collectathon game. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Platform for game. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like what like a like a Simpsons hit and run minus the cars. Yeah. I, mean, I, guess, I guess you could say that. Basically. Mm, interesting. I mean, hit and run. Hit and runs not as much of a collect a collectathon. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. I don't know why that came to to yeah, my mind. I mean, maybe just did because I, 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 I really want a remaster, remaster of that. I really want a remaster of hit and run. Hit and Run is an open world game, whereas Bikini yeah. Bottom is also an open world game where you get to explore the town in which you watch the cartoon a thousand times. Yeah. yeah. And I've been, and there's a cult following because apparently it's really good. Like, apparently that the platform yeah, um, is pretty damn good. I, I think it's a pretty popular speedrunning game. Yeah, I've heard that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have to check it out, I guess, at some point. Actually, take it back. Now it's coming to Steam. I probably can, actually. <laughs> You're going to get it. I can I can experience what everybody is talking about. It's just like, oh my god! Yeah, I I haven't seen the uh, trailer for it yet, but there it isn't. There's only there's like one thing that was sh shown off today. Now it's just oh, like is a, it just like a little teaser? 
Yeah, it's just a teaser. A SpongeBob like doing like victory screech. Then he does the the thing. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah no that's that is never thought I'll say that. Not, never thought I'd see something like that. Just kind of start up E3. <laughs> Take- <laughs> yeah, well, I mean the uh, that that publisher or I'm well dev or whatever that yeah. uh, they they have a bunch of nin- Nintendo licenses apparently. Oh yeah. THQ Nordic. I mean, I mean, not, uh, not, not Nintendo licenses. Um, THQ. THQ Nordic. Uh, yeah. uh, I know. Uh, Nickelodeon licenses. Oh gosh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say like THQ and yeah. uh, THQ Nordic has like an absurd number of IPs they're sitting on and an absurd number of games they're working on. Um, this is one of them. I was like, holy shit! Apparently, there's two more games going to be revealed from THQ. Like once being revealed tomorrow. Oh no, sorry, Friday. And then another one, I think Saturday or Sunday, some big three that they are planning to announce. Um, mm-hmm. People are saying it might be Kingdoms of Olimar. Um Okay, I'm sorry. Big news. What happened? Some actually legitimately big news. Mm. Okay. This uh, is a leak about some free Borderlands 2 DLC coming soon. Borderlands what? 2. Borderlands 2. Called Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary. Here's the description. Return to the award-winning shooter uh, shooter looter for a new adventure that sets the stage for the upcoming Borderlands 3. Sanctuary is under siege. The vault's map has been stolen, and a toxic gas is poisoning Pandora. Fight new bosses and explore new zones and get new loot, including an entirely new tier beyond legendary. And join up with Lilith and the Crimson Raiders to take on a deranged villain hell-bent on ruling the planet. Returning players can pursue an increased level cap of 80, while newcomers can automatically boost to level 30 and dive straight into the action. I, I've heard I've heard things, this and that, about a possible Borderlands 2 DLC to, to bridge 3. Um, I didn't really get into it, but uh, yeah, this, okay, this cool. Will either be, this will either be announced at E3 or the upcoming Guardian Con. Uh, that is true. I found money That's on That's so weird. I, no, but I think, it's on, I, think it's, I think it's on brand for them, honestly. Um, I think that Borderlands 2 was very well regarded and that I've, more DLC for that game is always welcome. So the fact that they're adding DLC to the game uh, to bridge into Borderlands 3, I think is, is awesome. Uh, well, I th- what I think is crazy is that, in my mind, what would make sense is to release that as a standalone thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, of course, don't charge for it or, or like maybe charge very little for it since they're already releasing it free with Borderlands 2. Yeah. Uh, but, like, making it to the extent that you have to have Borderlands 2 to play it is kind of strange to me. Um, because there's probably a lot of people who are playing... Like, I had Borderlands 2. I had Borderlands 1 on my Xbox 360. Like, the only Borderlands I officially own is uh, Tales from Borderlands. Mm. Yeah. So, to be f- well, to, to be well, fit... See, um, okay. Well, didn't they uh, release that that like the uh, that like remaster pack they did we recently did a uh with re- one and two yes so maybe the hats so maybe the dlc yeah. is for what that I'm hoping, here's what i'm hoping mm-hmm. the dlc comes out shortly before that's true all the telltale games are going to be going soon which i hope yeah some some publisher picks up those those games but absolutely yeah um uh come on devolver been awesome so far yeah definitely um what I was going to say is that the uh, on PlayStation this month, you can get the Handsome Jack Collection, which comes with just Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, for free. Um, and oh, wow. the first game is only is only 20 bucks. So I'm hoping that maybe that same deal comes to Xbox before 3 comes out. Um, and then around the time that that happens, also the free DLC comes out. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't put it past... Uh... Uh, gearbox to discount. <laughs> not Bor- gearbox. Not gearbox. I mean, two K. Two K. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't. Uh, I wouldn't doubt if two K suddenly does like a um, 
a sell on Borderlands 2. Like, they've been doing that recently anyways. Like, they already were uh, well, putting that game on sale. Three, there was one recently on Xbox. So you can get the Handsome Jack collection for 40 bucks and Borderlands 1 for 20 bucks. They were both 75% off, not, not too long ago. Yeah. I would not doubt that they would do it again for for the new DLC and the upcoming Borderlands 3, so... I mean, it's very likely. It comes out September 15th, so yeah. there's plenty of time to do deals and yeah. get everyone on board with the story so far. It just so happens I kind of been playing through Borderlands 2. <laughs> it's just like, oh! <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> um, one of my... That's good. That's one fun. of my, 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 well, my, my best friend, Andrew, he's never played any of the uh, Borderlands games. Oh, and uh, nice. me and my coworker, like, he's been part of our um, gaming group lately. We're like, okay, we need to play two, at, at least two, before the next one comes out. So we're actually going to hop back into it. So that's really cool that they're making a DLC for it. Oh, yeah, agreed. I, that's awesome. Oh, it, well, maybe. I mean, it's a rumor, right? It's not 100% confirmed, confirmed yet? It's not confirmed yet. It was, yeah. it, was a, it was a leak. So. Where did, where did you hear this? Uh, like, Polygon this? reported on it. Polygon. Uh, Polygon. Okay. So, okay. yeah, that's... that's, that's as long as it uh, wasn't, like, Kotaku. Uh, 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 well, even if it was Kotaku, it'd still be reputable. Yeah. Um, but but they, yeah. they, they make it very clear that it's, like, a leaked rumor. And anyone can make a leak. That is very true. They, so, there, there are definitely things that are happening right now that you... I would think via Steam, apparently. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, I think the one thing you have to, as Greg said earlier, like, take everything with a grain of salt. Like, yeah. whatever rumors, leaks, or what have you, we won't know until official word comes out out of said person's mouth at a press conference or whatnot. So, um, yeah, again, E3 hysteria. Like, there's going to be tons of this happening around this entire weekend. So... <gasps> Which makes things all exciting and it makes us kind of guess it's like you know is this gonna happen is this not gonna happen is this game gonna be shown off or not so um yeah these developers have worked their fucking asses off on making this game really well done and really good yeah so. well yeah absolutely. i think that it's uh it's really smart of them to kind of do this because you'll have some of the older players be like okay well let's pick up two and see what the new stuff is and then kind of get hyped for what three is going to end up being i'm what surprised me a little bit is that after all this time they still have the borderlands 2 um game per se uh yeah. like yeah, it sets to make something for it yeah i mean i i i get where you're coming from with that because it is an older game it's been a lot like between one and two was not that much time between three or two and three it's been seven fucking years yeah. Um, yes. So I get where you're coming from with that. However, Gearbox never went anywhere. So why they would ever get rid of those assets, it would be beyond me. Regardless. I know. Yeah, definitely. And it's smart. Like nowadays, publishers and game developers save stuff now. It's not like back Ooh. in the yesteryear where like liter <laughs> literal game developers would like destroy their, their work after the game is finished. <laughs> yeah, well, I was also, they, they didn't look at big games other than just toys. Now, now you have you know, years of development, both in store. Is that there really wasn't like people always talk about like, oh, I love the story in the first game. The story in the first game was awesome. And I'm like, it but it was it was barely there yeah it was, it was just a it was a very small vehicle to get the player from point a to point b mm -hmm. um it was it was more about playing within that world and it was a better story than destiny one by a goddamn long shot but, <laughs> right right uh, but, but um it still wasn't like a huge story it wasn't until they brought in anthony birch uh of uh hey ash what you playing to write the Borderlands 2 story. And he, he looked at what they did with one, which is like, we need an antagonist. So he like... Because, let's be honest, the first game did have an antagonist, but she wasn't very a very good antagonist. I yeah. vaguely remember any of the story from Borderlands 1. <laughs> like, it was fun to so, play, but like I don't remember the so story the, as much. <laughs> the, the story is basically the... the um, the four uh, vault hunters arrive uh, in, in where they need to be for Pandora. They're, they're contacted by Angel. Angel then tells them to head to a certain location and destroy a few, few things. Hunt down this, hunt down that, yada, yada, yada. 
And over the course of the game, you're then led to go talk to, um, I can't remember her name, but she has like, the, um, this, this other, hello, hang on one second, Greg, um, one second. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Give me one second. Hang on. Hang on. It wasn't the... I ended up being like the person who was leading you was the bad guy. Wasn't that it in Borderlands 1? Like it was uh, like a chick would, would pop up on your screen. And she was like... She, like, yeah, she was... Like, she, she was like a real life person and they just kind of just... Yeah. <laughs> would like play it over. Yeah. Well, what's funny is that whenever, when any siren ever contacts you via that way, it's an actual actress. Oh, okay. I see. I haven't played Borderlands in so long. I, especially the first one. I haven't played Borderlands one in super duper long. I'll be right back, guys. I'm gonna get some food real quick. So talk amongst yourselves while I'm away. Um, I will. Turn. What happened? Why did you need to tell me to stop for a second? Oh, cause like uh, you were talking, but then like there was no audio coming in, and I and I know why, cause my uh, it's my audio jack or at least my headphones are kind of acting, acting funky as of late so okay. yeah that's fine now but all right, I'll be right back guys and get some food uh, uh, so okay. anyway so yeah so yeah she uh, so the other siren is, is, is basically trying to stop you from finding the vault and that's mm -hmm. when you discover that uh, like the reason for the vaults is uh, not necessarily for a treasure it's because the Iridians were hiding monsters essentially uh, the game tells you that before you find the vault, but everyone's still about finding the vault because of the treasure, including the bad guy. So when yeah. she finally like steals the the key to the vault and opens it up, it's a giant fucking tentacle monster that comes out and kills her. Immediately. Mm. Just like stabs her right in the fucking chest. And uh, and then the uh, you as the vault hunter or whoever else you're playing with kill that thing, and you get a lot of loot out of it, but there's nothing inside the vault. Just absolutely nothing. It was just that monster. Yeah. Um, this was entirely designed in a way because it was like uh, the idea was uh, like kind of not everything that you push forward for or anything like that is is uh, worth fighting for. It was, it was a whole message or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, guys, that was that was uh, Borderlands One spoiler cast. That's fine. Greg. The game's fucking over 10 years. No, I know. I know. I'm fucking with you. But you wouldn't uh, survive it. <laughs> um, well, that's the thing. Okay, like... well, see. Okay. So, it was saying that, that there's going to be two other games that are going to be announced from THQ Nordic. Right? Did they say that? Uh, I think that's what Anthony was saying. But it's like, okay, well, what, what studios and what games? Well, I mean, Spongebob is one of them. Okay, yes, yeah, SpongeBob was one of them. There's supposed to be two other ones. Uh, Let's see. Hold on, I'll pull up something here real quick because I don't fucking look up. Okay, okay, so they recently made Kingdom Come Deliverance. Uh, I have no idea, dude. Like Darksiders, maybe? Time Splitters? Mm -hmm. Didn't they just do a Darksiders? Yeah, they just did Darksiders 3. Or has it come out yet? It did come out. Right? Yeah, Dark Souls, yeah. Yeah, that came out. Because I think that came out around the same time as Kingdom Hearts. Okay, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm like looking it. at their their list of acquisitions, and um, let me see. Um, Destroy All Humans. I that would be pretty cool there. to have, yeah. have a remake of that one. Did you ever play, play that on the Xbox? I, I don't think we're getting an, a remake or a sequel or anything to that. Oh, uh, that was such a good game. Though. I think that one. Red Faction. Might get a new Red that. Faction. We might get a new refraction. Mm, That's a big mic too. Really okay. I'm I'm just I'm going through the game and I'm just gonna just put out ones that make me go oh, okay. Stinks and the cursed mummy. <laughs> Definitely not. I don't even know what that is. That was like a Oh, I got like a PlayStation One or Two game. Let's see. 
Uh, they have the they have Time Splitters, um, Alone in the Dark. Maybe Alone in the Dark. <clears throat> um, Alone in the Dark would be really cool. Time Splitters, I could see them doing Time Splitters. That'd yeah. be super sick. I, I said Time Splitters a minute ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, a new Deblob game could definitely be something. Yeah. I'm going to put my money on Red Faction and Destroy All Humans. I, I would not put your money on Destroy All Humans. I legitimately do not see that game ever ever seeing the light of day again. I feel it in my jellies, okay? Don't, don't fucking quote Detective Pikachu on me. <laughs> I feel it in my jellies right now. To get a new Company of Heroes. Oh yeah, Company of Heroes. That would be pretty sick. See, yeah, they already did Dark Siders. I, I would have bet Dark Siders. Hmm. There's a lot of games that they could pull from, but I don't know, man. Like, yeah, hard to say at this moment. It, it's it's Painkiller. Painkiller was was pretty. That that was oh that that game was really really good, but it was really really old. That was like first Xbox and PC. You gotta think like it needs to be something that people will lose their goddamn minds over and be worth it, be worth their time to fucking do. And yeah, it's really hard for me to say that Destroy the Humans is something that they would take their time doing. Um, whereas Red Faction is still fairly popular amongst a certain group of people. Yeah, so they could do that one, but. Like, if it's Destroy All Humans, dude, I'll be legitimately surprised. <laughs> is is that going to be our uh, nope. our yearly E3 bet? <laughs> no, no. I, I don't... Uh, that one, to me, is not worth the bet. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll go... We'll, we'll wait for the actual prediction yeah. show, too. Also, like, they're not having... I don't think they're doing anything at any specific conference, so... Yeah, I think it's just going to be information is going to be released as the week goes on. Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm pretty sure. So, uh, what did you think about the uh, Pokemon stuff? I'm very excited. You see that? It's a lot of fun. Yeah, uh, it looks really the cool. Open world, the open world aspect is rad. Um, and I use the quotation open world aspect loosely uh, because... Uh, it's there's still going to be towns that you can't access until like a certain point in the game. Yeah, like, Pokemon has a has a uh, formula that you kind of have to stick to. Mm -hmm. um, but where you can go with that formula is in different places. Um, so like Zelda Legend Zelda, for example, Breath of the Wild, it still had the formula of you know gaining power and getting stronger. And I don't care about your hot dogs and hamburger. And, and, Wait, uh, is it hot dog with nothing on it? What kind of monster are you? I just, I just, I just, just saw that myself. Yep. <laughs> Second, he puts his fucking cans on. I want you to say something. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that's crazy. But that's my point. It's like you can take a game and do something new with it as long as you keep. Essentially, what I like to call the spirit there, and to me, yeah. the spirit of Pokemon is. The, the Pokemon itself, the battling, and, and the, like, whole get eight badges, then fight the Elite Four. That's in every single Pokemon game, and you should not change that. However, mm. see, Sun and Moon did it a little differently, because it wasn't just defeating gym leaders. It was, like, the island, the island, uh, the people, whatever it was. We were talking about Pokemon? Like, the but, uh, Talking about the thing from this morning? Yeah, we're also talking yeah. about we're talking about that, but I want to know why. Why do you not put anything on your hot dogs? No, I did. I, I literally just did a second ago. Invisible okay, mustard. good. I I put ketchup, it... I put ketchup on my hot dogs. Okay, good. Because I was like, ew. <laughs> <laughs> when you came and sat down. If I really feeling up to it, I could put cheese on top of it, and then ketchup, and then I don't know what oh, else. Good. Yeah. How do you monsters eat ketchup? 
It's good. Ketchup is good. Yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> it's just liquid tomato. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I see. One thing that I had noticed from the uh, the uh, trailer is there's a scene where he's walking around a uh, forest, and you see Pokemon that are like actually like like running around in in the uh, grass, like it was for mm -hmm. Let's Go. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wonder if that's gonna be like. Like, um, I think they're doing a combo. Yep, they are. So yeah, it looks like, like the way the the idea that I had of it when I saw it is like, well, maybe that might be like the new saf safari zone type of area. They call uh, it, they, they call it the wild zone or the wild area, I believe it was called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, but that, that looks really cool. Yeah, it's a combination. It's uh, it, you get to see the Pokemon and they'll still be hidden in the in the grass. So it's a combination yeah, of both. Because if you remember Sun and Moon, like you can see like the water splash or the grass move, and then if you go touch it, you fight you have Pokemon battle. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but in uh, and then in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, you 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 see them, and it looks like that there's both in this one. Now I'm hoping. What I'm honestly hoping is that um, when you're traveling in that open world space, that's basically how everything is, just how it is. Um, and that there's mm -hmm. no, like, if there are paths, it's not something ridiculous. Like, I kind of hope they do something different with the, with the paths and the open world area. And uh, like that, that's going to be fun for me. I'm pretty sure they'll talk more about it. Uh, excuse you. I'm pretty sure they'll talk more about it, um, at E3. More than, more than likely. More than likely. I know. I know. Yeah. Really? I know. Yeah. I think that that 15 minute thing was... To get that out of the way so they could do other things with uh so they, they can concentrate on other stuff yep so another yeah. half hour smash all right <laughs> i am I oh that. i cannot i cannot <laughs> wait till we get into it i have some uh i have some crazy things that i'm gonna tell you guys mm -hmm. all I have right. some crazy um, predictions that i've been thinking about at work all day today yeah i got uh, i got some notes here i got i got a list of games from last year so I have a good idea of kind of where to, where to, where to branch off of. So I was I was too busy bagging coffee. Didn't have enough time to write it down. So it's all <laughs> stored up up in the good old noggin. Ah, I see. Okay. A lot of uh, there's a, there's quite a few people. Nobody noteworthy that saying some really outlandish shit on Twitter, and it makes me laugh because I'm just like that. There's it, that's so unlikely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's true. Just from my knowledge of like. Uh, looking at this stuff, it just seems so unlikely. Yeah, you're not wrong, Valer. That could easily happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like honestly, I don't. I like. I I do believe that this this uh, direct. We are going to get an announcement for. Is it the? Do we? We don't have an announcement for the second DLC character. I guess. I mm -hmm. guess you know the third. Yeah, we we haven't got any any, any hints of the second third. Okay. For uh, Smash? Yeah. yeah. The next DLC character is what I'm getting. Yeah, I think you know what guys I so I, I think, think we're gonna get an announcement for sure. Yeah, I think we should we should hold off on that. Yeah, let's, let's I know. talk about that during I the show. I know. I, I have I have feelings about that too. Well here's the thing. Yeah. When we yeah. get to that part, we'll talk about who we think it'll be. Mm. But right now we can say that you know, like, I can just be like, Yeah, we're definitely hearing from that. Because I don't think anyone's gonna argue that. Yeah. That's not some mm -hmm. like weird prediction. Yep. <laughs> Only pack one Joker so far. Yeah. Okay. No, like the stuff that I'm hearing has to do with Xbox. It has to do with uh, like Sony doing like a surprise conference. And I'm just like, that's not a thing. There's no way. Yeah, no, that's not no. a thing. It's no. It's it's not like during the the Microsoft press conference. Like no. Like a dude wearing like a Sony jacket's gonna run in with like a chair and hit whoever's on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and just and be like. And out of nowhere, Sean Lennon goes on stage to a chair. Oh Johnny. my god! He broke him in half! My it's god, Phil, Phil Spencer's down! <laughs> I mean, well, I, I thought he took his head off, and then, like, and then, like, the. It's, it's like. Life to see that. Oh, and, god. and then, oh, like, man. like, the, like, the, like, state is, like, all green, and it just, like, blacks out and comes back and just blue. So, you know what's funny? A uh, long ago, at Anime or uh, another anime convention, there was, a, there was a video series for a while that's called After Dark, or something along those lines where it would um, basically uh, 
do this video shoot with these uh, women in lingerie or in, in very skippy outfits to kind of match the mood mm -hmm. of the After Dark um, cosplays at a con. And one of the ideas was thrown around that I heard was that they want to do an After Dark segment, but just on game devs. Just like people, somebody, people who dress up as um, Gabe Newell or Hideo Kojima or Sean Layden and like this very like sexy um, After Dark video segment of them like posing very risque and whatnot. Like I, I, I hope that it happened, but it never, never did. <laughs> so, man, that'd be so awesome and funny. Also, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Larry, which I'll get into, but that you're not too far on on that. We can we discuss that prior on this podcast about that idea, about the Game Pass thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know that. We'll go. We'll, we'll talk about. It. Yeah, I'm just saying like we we talked about it before. And it's like yeah, it's a okay, game we can hear. Yeah. So. Again, again, as as I've said before, I think we are getting something on the Switch. But it's quite literally going to be a hey, all those game developers that we that we uh, 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 acquired, yeah, here's, here's ones yeah. that are going to be on the Switch yeah. as well. It's like that's it. God, I want to talk now. God damn it, <laughs> I'm so yeah, I'm so eager. Oh. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to think of like other news. There's a ton of other stuff that's been happening as well. Um, like the, uh, here's the thing. it's good that the, we get um, Destiny, right now, so we don't go over time. Definitely. Yeah, well, the uh, the uh, Destiny Two, yeah, I heard that too. DLC got announced, and then they're also they also said that they were going to be doing like cross saves. Yes, with Google Stadia. Yeah, and it's going to be on Google Stadia apparently. Yeah, like, that's, that's that's pretty interesting. Apparently, that's what the that's what the the word is. We'll find well, out. Mm -hmm. You also got to keep in mind, Bungie's their own company now. Yep. Yes, yes, they're independent again. So, so one of the devs, like he, he tweeted a picture of uh, it saying uh, over Bungie, over over Destiny Two, like uh, developed by Bungie, published by Bungie, and he was like so proud. Is all he tweeted. Out. So mm, that's pretty I know good. That, that entire studio is very excited, and I'm like legitimately very excited for Destiny Three. Now that they yeah. got no restraints, Destiny Three is good. Oh man, it's gonna be good. Yeah. I, I really I, I really hope I hope the third time's a charm and I hope Bungie learn from the mistakes to know what they need to fix and strengthen when they need to strengthen what they're what they need to work on for uh, for Destiny three. But, we could talk about that Valera, but this is a video game podcast. Oh yeah, oh I, I actually been actually been uh, looking up on that too. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a it's really fucking stupid. Yeah. Like, it's done. that guy that guy deserves to get demonetized absolutely um, absolutely it's also youtube is kind of bullshit for their reasoning i understand why but it's still kind of bullshit <laughs> they are they are they are trying to pay pay play fast and loose with the whole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and everyone's just not having it yep so and that keeps updating too like i was watching oh, um this I was... is a fork over fight mm-hmm I was watching the village with the Franco show and like he literally had like seven updates to that same story. So I was yep. like, I was like, wow. <laughs> I was going to make a joke. I was like, we're not Philip DeFranco. And then we started talking about it. And I was like, well, this book doesn't really work anymore. Now does it? No, no. Actually, it was funny enough. I've been watching. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um, funny enough, I've actually been going back and watching um more HD, HD podcasts. Um, God, I mean, I, I fucking love, I love the way he, he conducts his podcast and that setup he has. Like, I, mm, man. Yeah, it's, it's that's, really That's my dream, honestly. As a, as a podcaster, I would love to have something like that. Oh, yeah, to have a fucking whole studio? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, that'd be such a fucking awesome. It'd be so cool. It'd be so fucking cool. But, you know, one day, one day when I get money and have a good job and then we can go from there. <laughs> it's still impressive. It is. It is so fucking cool. It's awesome. Man. Yeah. So I've been watching them recently again. So. Larry, you don't like a lot of people suddenly. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, he doesn't like me. He doesn't like me, but I tolerate him. So, you know. <laughs> I mean, Valerie, you know, he's, he's kind of an asshole if you ask me. You know. 
I'm, all I'm doing here is just providing content and entertainment. I don't know why he's, you know, it's just so mean to me. So, <laughs> just saying. You know, <laughs> I, I, I don't... I'll put it this way. I don't really find Ethan funny. His style is not really my comedy mm -hmm. area. Like, I just, I, I feel, I, he's just not very funny to me. That being said... Uh, the way that he does his podcast, I find very uh, fair to the guests, um, and I really, I really like that. But uh, to me, Ethan is up there with um, uh, what's his name? Comedian has his own podcast that everyone fucking talks about. Oh, uh, Joe, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hate the guy, just not that. Big of <laughs> not your style. Name. Well, it was funny enough. Like, I have not really watched much of his um, comedy stuff. Uh, uh, Joe Rogan? No, e Ethan's. Like, I haven't, um, I haven't really watched much, much of his com comedy stuff. Though I heard, you know, I've heard it's, it's pretty, pretty funny. I should check, check I it out. I, I, I've only really watched his stuff back when like YouTube keeps fucking up with something, and he has a video on it. That, uh, that's it. Gotcha. Because um, I'm just curious what's happening. Right. But it's, I mean, yeah. Like, laughing at his stuff, like, just I'm not. And then everyone's like, you should listen to his podcast. And I do. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like I, maybe that's just my sensibility because my, my flavor of podcast is comedy. Right, right. Like I listen to, yeah. listen to uh, uh, My Brother, My Brother and Me, which is arguably one of the best podcasts in existence. I should have, you, have you listened to um, last podcast on the left? No, but I've heard of it. Yeah, it's it's really good. It's um, they talk about like horror stuff, like uh, let's see, like ghosts, aliens, and then they cover like serial killers and shit, and like mass suicides and stuff like that. But they 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 so they they pretty much like tell you the story of all that stuff. But they're just they're fucking hilarious. They're they're it's like two two comedians, two comedians and like another guy. I think he's also a comedian. But either way, they're all freaking hilarious. And they are so good. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you would you would like them, Greg. Yeah, I, I might. I, uh, I'll have to listen to like one episode. I will tell you there is a podcast that is the driest of humor. Um, mm -hmm. It is like, have you ever had a a margarita? Not a margarita, but a uh, martini that made you want to drink like water. Yes. No, it's, it's that it's that kind of drive a podcast. It's called uh, Podcast But Outside. Hmm. Okay. Two guys do a podcast outside in a public area, and they have spare seats, and they just find passersby and have a conversation with them. Huh? Okay. What? Huh? It, it's funny, but it's real dry. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. That it is an interesting concept, but in practice, it sounds like it's not that entertaining. Uh, it, it depends yeah, on I mean, true. Yeah, it depends on the person. Like the, it was That's true. It's pretty yeah. much a show based off of you know like the interactions with random people. I'll tell you who's on fucking YouTube and has a podcast of his own that I find to be fucking hilarious, and that's Gus Johnson. He has a podcast. Yeah, him and him and his buddy Eddie. Oh shit! Which is literally called the Gus and Eddie podcast. Oh, I have to check it out. Fuck. Gus John, I'm not too familiar with who that is. Um, he has a bunch of YouTube videos where they're really short in length. Like I think, like some of his early stuff goes about ten minutes, but most of his stuff is like two to three to four to five minutes. Yeah. Um, but they're just bits. They're just small little sketches. Okay. And, uh, or small skits, if you will, because they're small. Um, but he recently had this whole thing where, uh, so the the to catch predator guy. Um, I can't think of his name. Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen, thank you. He's starting up his own YouTube channel that's basically to catch a predator. And it's like Chris Hansen's... Uh, it's, it's by another name, because to catch a predator is owned by whatever studio he did that. Yeah, is it like, is it like Chris Hansen and it just like sit down, sit right over there or something like that? Like, is that... It kind of, but like, I mean, it's, take a, a, seat. it's, exact, take, it's the exact Take a seat same. with Chris Hansen. <laughs> <laughs> it's the exact same uh, uh, setup and like thing, mm -hmm. 
Um, They're just doing it over YouTube. That's 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 kind of that's kind of smart, actually. You yeah. know, he'd probably make more money doing it over YouTube than he would maybe from when he was well, doing the it, show with Dateline. Versus Predator is what it's called. Yeah. Dancing versus Predator. Ah, okay. So okay. So now that I got that out of the way, because I was looking for it, um, mm -hmm. Gus and Eddie love watching those videos because it's genuinely highly entertaining to watch these pedophiles try to get their like squirm their way out of the situation. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so they looked at the, like the, their, like Chris Hansen's Twitter account for this and his YouTube channel. And it was bad. They had one video uploaded that was at, and I'm not joking. 144 P. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Oh, okay. God damn. Yeah. It was really bad. So, and it had like really compressed audio. It was, it was a mess. Oof. So, uh, Gus and Eddie are like, like, we, we want to help you. We want to help you fix this. And their 10 minute video on everything was hysterical. And they were, mm -hmm. they were kind of making jokes and stuff, but they were dead serious about helping, uh, Chris Hansen Chris Hansen, and, yeah. and, and his, and his people. So, uh, the, the Twitter was just like, every time it was something about that thing, they were just like, go listen to this video, go listen to this video. Gus and Eddie want to help you. Huh. And it got to the point where the fans were maybe doing it a bit too much because Chris and Eddie both got blocked oh. by the, by Hansen versus Predator. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> they were upset by it. They did a video where they were basically like apologizing, but not apologizing for wanting to help more about apologizing because they didn't want it to go to this extent. The yeah, day they uploaded that. Uh, people were tweeting at uh, or like commenting on on a tweet, like you guys should unblock Eddie, Gus, and Eddie. Like they're just trying to help. They're boy support boy. That's another phrase that they have is boy support boys. <laughs> which is, <laughs> okay, everybody, everybody's a boy. Right. Like even if you're a girl, you're a boy. So the okay. idea of boy boy support boys is that everyone supports everyone else. Like that's the idea. Yeah. Um. And. Uh, uh, so they were very adamant about. It. They were just. They were just like we were just trying to help. Like we still want to help. We want you to take out these guys. And like they got unblocked later that day. And I'm hoping to fucking high heaven that like Chris Hansen meets the request of being on their podcast. That would be outstanding. That that'd be pretty so good. So if they, if that happens, what happens after that? Like it feels like that's the, that's gotta, the ultimate goal after that. Like yeah, what, gotta, where do you, where do you, you go? Send me. Send, uh, send me a link to the YouTube channel because I, I would want to follow that and check them out. Um, Gus Johnson, just seriously search Gus Johnson. That's his YouTube channel. Gus Johnson. Okay, cool. And uh, uh, I honestly thought you were—I honestly thought you were going to say I was hoping they run an episode of his show. <laughs> <laughs> For those for those for those who are listening to the podcast, Valera and Chat says, I honestly thought you were going to say, "quote I was hoping I was hoping they were going they were on a episode of a show," and was worried that <laughs> w uh, uh, where that was going. Oh God! Like, what if like they they set themselves up to like they're on it? They're just like Chris Hansen, you can't run now. It's like, well, no, the actual <laughs> truth he's is, like, no, actually, you can't run. <laughs> you I'm not joking. I'm not joking. If 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 Chris Hansen goes onto their podcast, Gus and Eddie had better say have a seat. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, that'd be hilarious. That'd be great. It has to be done. Um, yeah, the the Eddie guy, he's funny. Um, I would say his stuff is less funny. Mm. Uh, I I find Gus to be way funnier um, for two reasons. A, he does sketches, which are great. And even if you don't watch his like. I don't want to call them reaction videos because it doesn't seem right, but they are essentially like he's basically giving commentary on stuff that's on Instagram or YouTube. Yeah. Much like Cody Co or, um, I don't know. <clears throat> Cody Co. Since we have a few minutes, <laughs> we're talking about YouTube. Did you guys hear about the whole Jake Paul thing recently? Uh, what the name sounds familiar? Jake Paul is the brother of um, Logan Paul. Logan Paul. Wait, was that so? I follow this guy named Cody Ko on, on YouTube. I actually followed him on the days of flying. He started doing uh, comedic, um, uh, what's it called? Reaction videos, I guess you could call them that. Uh, where most are reaction videos, but basically, him. Him or him, a combo of him and his friend um, Noel will react and make jokes to a video they found online. 
One of my favorite mm-hmm. ones was <laughs> where the guy from the lead, sh- lead singer of Sugar Ray uh, got pissed off because some kid yelled, more like Sugar Gay. Um, oh my god. <laughs> and then the fucking lead singer guy got furious. But not in like a normal, angry sort of way, or like the way yeah. that a mature adult would have to handle it, where he just lets it go. Like he gets like stupid mad, but he's also clearly drunk. So a lot of the shit he's saying is not like not good. Um, okay. But Cody and Noel make the video even funnier with their commentary. It's genuinely entertaining. Um, by the way, that guy went on to interview later and was just like, "I was very drunk. I was I was in a bad mood. It just wasn't the right time. I really regret that video ever surfacing." And yada yada. So yeah, I read that guy. It's Mark McGrath. Mark McGrath. Thank you. I want to say Mark, but I was like, I don't feel that's right. Uh, but there's a bunch of other videos, but two two of their commentary videos are on Jake Paul. Um, yeah. I believe both are on music videos. And uh, it's honestly every time that Noel and Cody do a video like this, it's it's just for fun. It's just for jokes. It's, it's, it's razzing for the sake of comedy. That's all it is. It's no different than Valer coming in here and calling Anthony a dumbass. Um, uh, it's meant for nothing more than laughs. However, Jake Paul didn't get that fucking memo. Okay. Because there is a uh, there is a different YouTuber who cuts the hair of a of a YouTuber of another YouTuber or somebody famous and kind of razzes them the entire time, gives them shit. It's fucking super funny, and I cannot remember the name of the the channel. But he wanted Cody to come on there. He wanted he wanted Cody to come in there and say like you know, to get to get made fun of, and it, it happened. But what this guy thought would be really funny is if he brought in Jake Paul. So Jake Paul takes this opportunity to tell Cody that he's a cyber bully. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's fucking it's oh real this shit yeah i saw this yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 he's like you're a cyber bully you're making fun of kids and cody's like what kids i'm not making fun of any kids <laughs> like there was one situation where cody genuinely felt bad about a situation and he rectified it as best he could he made fun of this kid named maddie smokes and it was a dumb teenager with his friends who were vaping in a car they were gonna hot box a car with vape can't do yeah. that <laughs> Literally can't do that. Yeah. Um, and and him and him and Noel made fun of that video, like they destroyed it. Unfortunately, they never said at the end of the video, "Don't go to this person's page. Don't you know? Don't give them shit." They just ended the video on a comedic note. Yeah. A lot of the younger fans that watch Cody's stuff took an opportunity to go give Maddie Smoke shit, and Maddie got so it got so bad for him that he had to shut down his channel. Oh uh, shit! Cody found out about this and felt really bad and had and had Maddie Smokes on his podcast, brought him in on his stream. Noel's brought him in on his stream. Like they've made friends with Maddie. Maddie brought back up his YouTube channel and people, had, you know, they were just like, "Yeah, we didn't think that that was going to happen. We didn't think it was going to get to you." And I was like, "What the fuck did you yeah. think was going to happen?" Even yeah. Cody Cameron was just like, "Don't fucking do that shit." Like I'm yeah. making jokes for you guys to watch and laugh at, not for you to go give the other person shit. So mm-hmm. I really appreciate Cody going to that extent, but on that yeah, note, I Maddie was that's... even over. Maddie was over eighteen when that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, so still at this point, Cody has not you know done that to any kids, and it certainly isn't fucking cyberbullying. Um, mm-hmm. And Jake Paul deserves every fucking piece of made fun of that he's ever got. So mm-hmm. it was really fucking bad, and the internet was just like Jake Paul, Jesus Christ. Take yeah. your fucking clown shoes and get walking. <laughs> yep. Yep. Fuck Jake Paul. I can say it on this podcast. Uh, he just he he just doesn't care. He just cares about the money and he makes a lot of it. Yeah. It, it, like honestly, no joke. His video where he confronts Cody is fucking hilarious. <laughs> because in every way she <laughs> Cody makes a great joke on his little re, like response video. And he was just like, also who the fuck comes in and tries to, to confront somebody who just got a haircut? I look <laughs> fresh as fuck. <laughs> oh, man. The joys <laughs> of watching uh, YouTube drama and people being assholes. And that, was barely, that was barely drama. That I, was... know. I know. Just I'm, I'm trying to uh, corner into starting the show. Um, 